We're so glad to see you today. I'm Cheryl Hoffman. I'm from UCLA, and I've been asked to speak with you today about uterine fibroid embolization. I'm part of the interventional radiology team and part of a large fibroid treatment collective that compo is composed of surgeons and cross-sectional imagers and interventional radiologists, a whole bunch of people. And we really like taking care of patients who have fibroids. It's something we're very passionate about. So I'm part of the uterine fibroid embolization team, which is composed of three doctors, Dr. Plotnick, Dr. Gomes, and me, Cheryl Hoffman. And we're the three at UCLA that do this procedure the most. So I would love to speak with you today about uterine fibroid embolization. And this side, I think, says everything you need to know what you need to know, and that is it works. And for most patients who have fibroids, all the symptoms associated with fibroids, right? Because we don't treat fibroids that are not symptomatic, rather we treat fibroids that are symptomatic. So if you have bleeding or that's too much, if you're anemic, if you have pelvic fullness, if you have to pee too much and you have pelvic discomfort from your fibroids or from adenomyosis, you are the group of patients that can be successfully treated with uterine fibroid embolization. So if you have questions, go ahead and forward them to this hashtag, UCLAMDChat, or comment on Facebook, and we will get to the questions at the end. So for 20 years, we have been doing uterine fibroid embolization. I was part of that original time, and we have grown so much, our techniques are getting better and better, and our data is becoming more and more solid, that indeed, this is a procedure that works, and we can honestly say now, it's tried, it's true, scientifically proven, and it works. It's a non-surgical option. We have medical options, and we have surgical options, and this falls right in the middle. It's a procedure, and it works. What's most important is it treats all the fibroids. That's a common question I receive. You have fibroids, and sometimes on ultrasound we see two, we see three, we see four. When we do an MRI, even better, even more clear, we can count all the fibroids. And indeed, we treat all the fibroids, not just the largest fibroids, but we treat all the fibroids. By going into both uterine arteries and putting the particle in, the uterus stays alive and those fibroids will die. They'll become like cysts. And the uterus will stay alive and all the fibroids will be treated. And adenomyosis can be treated as well. For years, only a couple choices were given for patients with adenomyosis. Medical options, treat with iron, for example, maybe try an IUD or hysterectomy. But indeed, uterine fibroid embolization works wonderfully. Not quite as well as with fibroids, but really well in general and therefore, oftentimes, it will relieve the symptoms. Now, uterine fibroids are very common. They're benign. They're smooth muscle overgrowths, and they can occur in multiple locations in the uterus. So here's an example of a fibroid in the uterine cavity, in the endometrial canal, where the baby would sit, if you will. Or you can have one right under that wall in the wall of the uterus, we call it submucosa. It's under the mucosa of the inner cavity or a submucosal fibroid. It can be transmural. It can go all the way across. It can be subserosal, which is just deep to the outer layer, or it can be pedunculated, sort of on the outside. So bottom line, inside, just under the mucosa, across the whole muscle, or on the outside. Those are the typical locations of fibroids. They are associated with heavy menstrual bleeding, anemia, passage of clots sometimes. And as we described, you can have urinary frequency, pelvic pain and pressure, back pain. Sometimes people think they have back pain and they don't realize it is indeed from their heavy their, their heavy uterus, their big uterus, and their fibroids, which is pushing on their back. They can have constipation, they can have pain with intercourse, and these are all from a uterus that 
candidly doesn't fit very well in the body. And later on in this time we have together, I am going to show you samples of uteruses and you'll see how sometimes they can give you a baby bump, push against the front rectus muscles, or push along the back, along the spine, give you back pain, or push on the bladder and make you feel like you have to pee too much, or give you pain with intercourse because it's just filling up your, your whole pelvis. So the bottom line is that um, these bulk symptoms can be relieved with embolization, and of course, heavy menstrual bleeding can also be relieved with embolization. So this is really important. When we talk about treating fibroids, we have a spectrum of treatments. And of course, doing the least amount of treatment to handle the problems is best for you. We're all trying to become as minimally invasive as possible. So for example, if you have fibroids, but they're not doing anything, we don't want to touch them, right? But if you start to become symptomatic, we begin to give you medical options. What might they be? They could be birth control pills. They could be just taking an iron pill to try and help the anemia. Then it could be things like an IUD or endometrial ablation, where you go up through the vagina and you just put a device in or, or heat a lining, do something like that. Again, minimally invasive for you. So in this minimally invasive category, uterine fibroid embolization is very robust. It really treats all the fibroids and consequently the uterus will shrink and the fibroids will shrink and it is prior to having a surgical option which is much more invasive. 90% of patients are satisfied with the bleeding symptoms at one year. 80% are satisfied with treatment of their bulk symptoms at one year. And we even have long-term tenure data that more than two-thirds of patients are very satisfied with their procedure, this minimally invasive option that will handle their fibroids. We have overall, as measured at six months, 40 to 70 percent volumetric shrinkage of the fibroid and the uterus. Now why do we quote this number? That's because many of us, most of us, will scan and look at the uterus at six months. But that uterus will continue to shrink, and the fibroids will continue to shrink for years afterwards. But certainly a 40 to 70 percent volumetric shrinkage of the uterus and the fibroids is enough, and it really handles your symptoms. How about large fibroids? We get that question a lot. Large fibroids are fine. They can be treated with embolization. Same with pedunculated fibroids. Those fibroids I showed you that are hanging off the edge, they can be treated with embolization as well. So those are some of the questions we get. The majority of patients with fibroids can be treated with embolization. So how do we work you up? How do we get you ready, if you will, for the procedure? Well, we do a detailed history and physical. You come to see us in our clinic. You can come on your own and have a conversation about your treatment options. And there are numerous, and one thing we love to do is describe all the options and figure out what's best for you. And usually there's two or three options that are best for you and then you get to decide which one you prefer. But that's extremely important. We at the fibroid center and in our fibroid clinics don't just talk about the one choice that maybe we're expert in. Rather we talk about all the choices and then figure out the few for which are reasonable I would say for you and then you can decide what is best for you given all your life circumstances. We obtain a quality of life score. That are, that's numerous questions that ask you about how your fibroids are affecting you and your life. And we get a number from that. And that's one way that I can tell how symptomatic you are. So oftentimes a, a high score, 90, 100, 120, 140, that's significant. So you may describe your symptoms, but when you give me that score, that helps me know really in another way how you're doing. Similarly, at your follow-up appointments, and if you choose embolization, we see you in clinic, at least I do, at two weeks, three months, at six months. Some of my partners have other regimens, but we definitely do follow-up, including a follow-up MRI. And at those visits, we ask you to fill out the quality of life again. 
and usually patients will go, for example, from a high score, I'll pick a number like 120, down to a reasonable score, almost normal at 40, 50. And so I can look at those scores and I can say, yes, we have handled the problem. That, along with a good quality MRI, and I'm going to show you some of those MRIs so you can really see what I'm talking about. When we see those improvements that you've shared with me, that you are feeling much better, the quality of life score is so much better, the MRI looks so much better, we know you're doing really well. So we get the MRI and we get some labs so we can see how your ovaries are functioning, see if you're anemic or not. There's a variety of labs we need to check. Now I talked about how we do the procedure and this is a slide that will show that to you. Here we go, we enter at the radial artery and we wiggle a little catheter all the way up into these uterine arteries, right in here. And we put particles in and we prune the tree if you will. We're not looking to take these outer arteries completely out but the arteries that are supplying blood to those fibroids we want to stop that blood flow, and that's how we get those fibroids to become like cysts. So we put little particles in here, and that gets the whole uterus to shrink and those fibroids to shrink as well. When we do it on the wrist, we can just put pressure. We use a little band, a little device, a plastic device, and I'll show that to you as well. And that's on there for about an hour, and we leave you with a two millimeter dot. There's no touching you down in the inguinal area, in the groin weather area, that all stays fine. And afterwards you can walk, you can get up to go to the restroom, you can get into a, a coiled position if you have a little bit of cramping, which can happen after the procedure, that's why we give you lots of medication. So you're walking, you're moving, and there's much higher patient satisfaction. Everybody really is happy that there's no Foley catheter and no groin entry, which is our usual. It's done as an outpatient, so if I do it in the afternoon, you can go home later that evening or the following morning very early. We do it in the morning, you can sometimes go home later in the day. We give you anti-inflammatory medications and stool softeners. We don't want you to become constipated. And then, if needed, you can have pills for pain, of course, like a Percocet, you know, something that's a little stronger or an IV if needed. Um, but the pain really subsides after the first 6 to 12 hours, and then it becomes very manageable on non anti-inflammatories, which is the equivalent of like your Advil, things like that. And again, we don't want you to become constipated, so I always say eat a lot of foods that keep your stool very soft. Some people even do a full bowel prep. I don't do that, but I do encourage patients to really aggressively clean out their colon, and if they start to feel like they're getting constipated, I ask them to take more medication like a, you know that will clean them out then you can return to work in a week and follow up with me in a couple weeks so here's an example we have sagittal MRIs that means we are looking at the body on the side right here and here's an MRI of a dilated uterus this is the front this is the back and here are the fibroids this is the cavity where a baby would sit. We call it the endometrial canal. So you can see this uterus is big with these fibroids. We bring you in to the clinic, not clinic, to the hospital, and we enter the radial artery. Here's a hand and an entry, and we take this little catheter right here, and we wiggle it up, as I shared with you, into these uterine arteries, and we put particle in. And that's what I'm doing here. You can see these little catheters, and these are the vessels and these are the abnormal uterine vessels right in here. And we just prune the tree. We take out these vessels that are abnormal and we leave the big uterine artery, which is normal. And here you can see that's what we've done. We've pruned the tree and taken out a lot of these abnormal vessels. At the end, we put this plastic band I told you about over the artery so it pushes down for one hour and then it comes off and then we leave you with a little dot that heals very well. So let's do some before and afters. I think that would be terrific and you will see how concrete and how beautiful MRI is for showing us the fibroid, the uterus, the adjacent structures. So here is our sagittal MRI and here is a uterus. 
Here's the spine to orient you. Here's the front. Here's the back. You can see the uterus. And here is the fibroid. Now that fibroid was dilating the cavity. So it's sort of half in the cavity and half outside the cavity. And we did our embolization. And you can see here the fibroid is basically completely gone. It has just melted away. And this uterus now is looking so nice and so normal. Let's take another one. How about a big uterus? So again, to orient you, here's the belly button, here's the front, and here's the back, and here's a very large uterus with these fibroids. Can you see these balls, which are the fibroids in the uterus? We go ahead, we do our embolization, and those fibroids have now shrunk down, and they're these smaller balls. So whereas before, this uterus went up high, these are the lumbar vertebrae, we can say five, four, three, two, to the L2 level. Now look, here's five, four, it only goes up to the L4 level. The uterus has become much smaller, and all the fibroids have become much smaller, and this is a, a whole new day for this patient. How about here? Again, a big uterus with a big fibroid, but it's shrunk down, and this will continue to shrink for years to come. This is a pretty typical case. Here's a bulky uterus. Hopefully your eye is getting used to this now. This is the front. This is the back. Here's the spine. Now, this patient's had a myomectomy. How do I know that? Because you see these little black marks there? Those are surgical clips. So I can tell this patient's had a myomectomy, but the fibroids have, that were left recur or new fibroids grew. We don't know. But you can see here's a fibroid, here's a fibroid, here's a fibroid. This is a boggy uterus filled with fibroids. So we went ahead and we did the embolization. And now look at this uterus. Here's still the black clips. I love that. But see this small uterus? Now it's very small. And each of these white, kind of gray-white circles, which were the fibroids, have turned into little black six. Here's the, the bladder. You can see the bladder filled with urine. See how black that is? And see how these fibroids have become just like that? The fluid's a little thicker, but not much. It's just fluid. And you can have cysts all over your body. If they're not doing anything, we don't care. And that's exactly what's happened. And here you can see there are these fibroids, but there must have been a whole bunch of little ones that we couldn't even appreciate on the MRI because when we did the embolization, look what you have now. Dot, 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 dot. Think of that. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine fibroids there, and we probably only counted two or three on this one. So like I shared with you, what's so important is we treat all the fibroids with this technique. The fibroids turn into cysts. They go from, I like to say, from fruit to cysts. They become soft, smushy, smaller, and everything at six months. The uterus and each fibroid have become much smaller. Again, very typical case. Here's the front. Here's the back. Here's a uterus filled with fibroids. One, two, three. You can almost say it's like a Swiss cheese uterus, right? Because there's so many bubbles and fibroids throughout. Squishing this little bladder now. Hopefully you can recognize that. And look what happened. Look, we did the embolization. Now look at this uterus. Do you see how much smaller it is? And look at, here's some of the fibroids. Here's the canal, just a whole new day. It was filling up the whole pelvis before, and now you have a normal-sized small uterus with a few little holes, which are cysts, which are the old fibroids. Again, same sort of pattern. And when we see out to three years, you can see how things have just become dramatically smaller. Now this is a good case because this is not fibroids. This is adenomyosis. And many patients may be told, you do nothing. Or of course, you can try an IUD and other things, which is great. You know, again, we always want to stay in that medical, minimally invasive category if possible. But besides that, it was that or hysterectomy. But embolization fits in that middle category, so we don't have to go to, uh, to hysterectomy. And you can see here, this is what the normal uterus should be like. Do you see this nice, thin wall here? But look at the back wall. Do you see how thick it is and all these little white dots? This is a big uterus in here with this thickened wall. That's all adenomyosis and abnormal, pre, before embolization. But here, look what, what happened. We embolized. And this uterus, which remember you're counting vertebra now, so it went up to the middle of L5 and 
giving her even a little baby bump. You see the rectus muscle is pushed anteriorly a little bit. But then that whole big side, look what it did. It smooshed down to almost normal. This is the front wall, this is the back wall. And look at the small uterus now, way down in the pelvis, no longer a baby bump. So we got an excellent result for adenomyosis. And this patient's symptoms completely resolved. She began having normal menstrual periods, no longer having that very heavy bleeding. Again, pretty typical. Hopefully now you're getting really comfortable with MRI. This is the front of the body. This is the spine. This is the bladder. And what's here? This is the uterus after gadolinium. You can see the fibroids here, one, two, maybe a little one up there. This patient was having some bladder problems, I believe. And after the embolization, look what we have now. Look how much smaller that uterus is with just a little cyst here and a cyst there. And look how big the bladder is, nice and full, no longer having urinary problems. And I believe this is the last one. Again, this patient, instead of having to pee all the time, had retention. They actually had to go to the emergency room and have a Foley catheter put in because they couldn't pee, which is a terrible feeling. Here's the bladder, and here's the fibroid in the uterus, which is flexed back and pushing on this bladder outflow. But after the embolization, no longer did they have any urinary symptoms. They never had to go back to the emergency room to have a catheter put in that bladder. They were able to pee normally, and everything was much smaller. So in conclusion, I hope I've shared with you what I stated on the that first slide, which is for uterine fibroid embolization, it works. It's minimally invasive and it really works. We run clinics in Westwood, Santa Monica, and Manhattan Beach. Doctors Plotnick, Dr. Gomes, and I, Cheryl Hoffman, are part of the uterine fibroid embolization team. These are the numbers where we can be reached, and we look forward to meeting you. Now, I have some questions that I'd like to answer. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. So first question is, do I need an MRI or is an ultrasound enough? And the answer is you really need an MRI, although if there's a reason why you can't have one, whether it's insurance reasons or other things, we could probably get by with an ultrasound. In the old days, we used to do it with just an ultrasound, but you can see how gorgeous our MRI images are, and they really show us so much about the fibroids, where they're located, and bottom line is we do need one, but it's not an absolutely have to have one kind of situation. Second question, are most patients a candidate for uterine fibroid embolization? And I hope I've answered that. The reality is yes. Most people who have symptomatic fibroids are candidates for uterine fibroid embolization, and it's a wonderful option. Patients who have large fibroids, patients who have pedunculated fibroids, patients who have adenomyosis, most people can have an embolization, and um, it is extremely successful. I have anemia. Should I continue to take iron supplements or should I just get treatment? Well, for those of you out there taking iron, you know that sometimes you tolerate it well, but sometimes you can get constipated. Some people really don't like iron because of the constipation or because it hurts their stomach. So for those who can take it, definitely take it. For those who can't take it, we may have much more of a problem because you know you can't continue to lose blood. Most people feel very weak, lethargic, not quite like themselves when they don't have enough blood, meaning they're bleeding too much and they're becoming anemic. So it's important that you get treatment and you learn about your options and we stop that process. Many of my patients tell me after the embolization they feel reborn. And that's partly because they've been suffering for a long time with these symptoms and they maybe didn't want the hysterectomy, they didn't want surgery and they're trying to figure out what to do. So by the time they come to me, they're so relieved to have figured out what they can do and then actually have the symptoms fixed. They began walking, they become healthier, they may lose weight. It's a, sort of a rebirth. So anemia makes you tired. You do need to take iron if that's the case. We hope you can tolerate it, but if you can't, it becomes even more important that you seek treatment early on. 
Next, do I have to remove my IUD before undergoing the procedure? And the answer is no, you don't. Now, if the IUD is just for bleeding, you might as well have it taken out because we're going to fix the bleeding. But if the IUD is for birth control, you can leave it in and it's just fine. We do not have to take it out. Is blood transfusion required for this procedure? No, blood transfusion is not required. In fact, we don't lose blood. So for those of you out who, there who do not want a transfusion, whether you're Jehovah's Witness or you have other reasons why you just don't ever want to have to be in a position where you may need blood, this is a good procedure for you. We don't have any blood loss, minimal. A drop or two, seriously, it's very minimal. And for those people that are anemic, you know, you don't want to lose more blood. So again, this is a good procedure. We stop all the bleeding and we don't lose any blood while we're doing that. Um, does my doctor need to refer me or can I come see you directly? That's a good question. You can come see us directly. We run our own clinics and that's at Santa Monica and Westwood and Manhattan Beach. So clinic times are available and you can just come in on your own and we'll take good care of you before, during, and after. We're clinical physicians that do procedures and we are um, all set up for that and have been doing that for the 20 years that we've been doing this procedure. When can I go back to work? That's an important question. I say a week. Um, I want you to be able to rest because even though we leave you with just a dot, you can feel a little beat up, a little bit like you've had the flu. We've done big things on the inside. And so I want you to be able to nap and rest and not be overly stressed with outside responsibilities, but you don't have restrictions. So when you leave from the hospital or clinic, wherever you should have it done, um, you, you can go on walks, you can go out to a meal, you can go and do things. I just have three things I don't want you to do for one week, and that is have intercourse, soak in jacuzzis, or wear tampons, just for a week. And then after that, really, there's no restrictions. So when you leave the hospital, you have no restrictions. But taking one week off of work, I think, is a really good idea to just maximize your health and take very good care of yourself. Take afternoon naps if you feel like it. But we want you up and moving all the time. That's how we prevent blood clots and as you know, the more you lay around in bed, the weaker you become. We don't want any of that. So we want you up and moving, but not being overly stressed with work. Is the procedure covered by insurance? Yes, it is. Um, of course, you have deductibles to worry about, but insurance companies cover it. And for many, many years now, they're all on board. Uh, they know it's a wonderful option for patients. It's also cheaper, candidly, for the insurance companies. Um, so they're happy and we do not have any trouble having insurance cover the procedure. So I want to thank you very, very much for spending time with us today. I hope we've enlightened you and taught you a bit about uterine fibroid embolization. We look forward to meeting you. So from UCLA, all my colleagues as part of the Uterine Fibroid Treatment Center, we say thank you. Take care.